getting involved with the Dads Take Your Child to School at a statewide level. Today's webinar has multiple speakers, which you will hear throughout the day or throughout the hour that we have with you. And they'll be giving you an overview of the program and also unveiling the new website, which I must say is terrific and will give you a great overview of the program and give you lots of valuable information. But before we get started, what I want to let you know is just that we're going to be taking questions at the end of the webinar. This will give all our presenters a chance to be able to give you the information they need to. But at any point in time, if you have questions, you can just type the questions in, and then we will ask them of the presenters at the end. Um, I think that's all I need to say right now, but before um, I end, I just want to turn this over to Gregory Owens. Gregory is with the New York State Office of Children and Family Services, and he will be the moderator of the webinar today, and he will be introducing the individual <coughs> presenters as, we <coughs> as they present. Okay, and with that, Gregory, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for taking time from busy schedules to be a part of this uh, webinar for our 2014 Dads Take Your Child to School program. OCFS is uh, proud to be a part of this again, as we have been for about eight years now. And uh, we look forward to this presentation and to future work with you. Uh, I'm going to move this forward. Um, and my role is basically to introduce the presenters and then try and keep track of the time so that we don't go beyond our allotted uh, time this, this morning. So. Uh, I know everyone will work with me around that, and we look forward to your questions. Also, for your information, our colleague in Niagara Falls can't join us. She was called away uh, on the emergency this morning, but I'll be talking briefly about the efforts of Niagara Falls, uh, which has been wonderful during the course of the last several years. So our speakers uh, today, at least uh, the formal speakers, there will be some others who will be joining us, are Will Henry, who is a family engagement specialist for the Center for the Development of Human Services with the New York State Office of Children and Family Services, and Will has been a part of previous uh, webinars. Judith R. Albury, who is the program specialist for the Office of the Regional Administrator for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Region 2. Alan Farrell, New York City Fatherhood Services Coordinator with the New York City Mayor's Office, who has also been part of previous webinars, as has Ed Lawson, Vice President of Fathers Incorporated, Community and Outreach Coordinator for the National Responsible Fatherhood Clearinghouse. And we thank all of you for once again being a part of this important webinar. Um, so the question that many people ask if we go to our next slide is why uh, should we even get involved in this effort? So we're going to talk a bit about that after we review our agenda and then get into some of the presentations. Um, our webinar today will include our introductions, a, a presentation on why we think this is important, a history of the campaign, uh, talking about our new website, which is wonderful, as you've heard, some suggested themes that you can focus on, uh, spotlighting the promising practices across the state, and what will happen hopefully beyond September the 16th. And we want this to be considered uh, more than just a one-day event, but a real engagement of families and fathers as we look for better outcomes for children and youth in our school system. So that's, in essence, our webinar for this morning. So the question uh, in the next slide is why participate? And then there are many benefits um, um, of engaging fathers and father figures and dads in the educational process of young people. Studies have shown that children who are, have fathers that are involved display better cognitive outcomes, even as infants, less likely to drop out of school, uh, obtain higher grades and test scores and overall academic achievement, even enjoy school more, get more A's, and are more likely to continue their education. And this comes from the 2007 data from Father Facts, 5th edition. And so there are many benefits uh, to engaging and uh, encouraging fathers to participate in the lives of their children's education. We'll go on to the next slide and continue this as we see that father engagement um, improves the image of fathers and males in education, which is often skewed towards the negative because of the mythology around fathers not wanting to be engaged or whatever other myths are part of that. Increased involvement of fathers and males in schools and educational uh, processes. Encourage active engagement of fathers in their children's education. Promote educational institutes as father-friendly environments. And we had a webinar on that a couple of years ago uh, with uh, some co-sponsorship from OTDA. And create an active presence of fathers in schools the entire year round. So the benefits of the Dad's Take Your Child to School program are to be a springboard for all of this activity and all of this kind of creativity and innovation that we hope will encourage father engagement and family engagement 
throughout the year. So I hope I've made a case for why this is important, and I'd like to turn this over to Will Henry to talk a bit about the history of the campaign. Will? Thank you, Greg. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, to give you an idea of where this has come from, uh, it began with a man called Philip Jackson. In um, 2004, he was the executive director of the Black Star Project. And at that time, him and a, a group of his uh, fellow men, including Latinos, began thinking of how can we, quote, unquote, engage fathers in regards to education elements, what have you. And they took an inspiration from uh, Louis Farrakhan's Million Man March, as well as they were also inspired by the South American tradition of men going to the schools on the last day to thank everyone from the principal to the janitor for helping educate their children. They decided to go to school on that first day in Chicago in 25 neighborhoods. Uh, they had a great response, and then the following year, they were able to reach 127 cities in regard to doing the Million Father March. Now, take in mind, this, they only had a uh, four-day lead time, what have you, to get it rolling when they first started, and it's picked up speed, steam so much more since that time. In 2006, they developed a national uh, internet registration process which allowed individuals, groups, and schools to register to kind of put their cities, their schools on the map as far as uh, reaching their goal of million men taking children to school. For us in New York State, uh, we, many of us who were aware of it signed on, not just in New York City, but across the state in and of itself. Uh, with that in mind, in 2007, uh, the New York State Office of Children and Family Services, New York City Office, kind of picked up the idea to kind of leverage a training effort that has been going on in regards to locating and engaging fathers and their extended families. In response to our family engagement initiative, for that in mind, this is where child welfare workers are trained on how to locate fathers and engage them. With that, we identified the Million Father March as a possible leverage tool that workers could use to engage fathers and, and their children. We started with uh, one school in Brooklyn, PS 316, and at the time, uh, Senator Eric Adams participated and the event was covered by our news media. In 2008, the New York State Office of Temporary Disability Assistance partnered with OCFS to promote this, this effort, whereas we had not only had at least one school in every borough in New York City, we also had schools in Albany that participated. In 2009, the Administration for Children and Families joined this movement, and it brought a, a number of benefits that's helping us have this particular event now. With that in mind, the name of, of the Million Father March was changed into Dad Take Your Kids to School Day. This is to include all ethnicities, all fathers throughout the state, uh, so that it's not just uh, a black thing, as you might call. Um, at the time, Kenneth Braswell, who was director of the National Fatherhood Clearinghouse, and the former director of the University of the Temporary Disability Assistance, kind of helped us develop our graphic, which is the man you see walking with two children, as well as the Administration for Children and Families allowed us to not only have that graphic and the poster board, but also they helped post up the first website, which you will hear more about as we go on today. Um, with that in mind, uh, ACS, DYCD, uh, Office of Child Support Enforcement, all of these elements partnered and then also included in their development uh, the Dad's Take Your Kids to School Day. Um, each year since 2007, we've in encountered many, many more interested parties in joining this movement, and we are glad to say that from that, we now have the Dad Take Your Kids to School Day a website launch, which you are participating with now. Uh, Greg, that's all I have for today. And I'll turn this back over to Greg and Ms. Owen. Thanks a lot, Will. Um, and the Dad Take Your Child to School event um, has a great history um, in New York City and throughout the state. And with your help, those of you who are participating today uh, will grow it even more. You can see some of the campaign um, ad materials material and, and, and public information material that we have used to promote this. Um, the next several slides um, kind of take us to our current circumstance with our website uh, and some information related to what we're working on right now. 
And Judy, I'm going to turn this over to you, I believe, for the next several slides related to that. Sure. Thank you, Greg. Can we go to the main um, website homepage, please? So as you can see, this is our official website. This is where you should be going right now to obtain any information you want with regards to dad to take your child to school day. And on this site, it will allow you to get all of the information you need with regards to that to take your child to school day. The design of the website was intended to make sure that you had everything at your fingertips. If you look at the top of the page, um, Will just spoke about the history. And you'll see we've now added a history page, which um, gives you a summary of that information that will provide it for you. And it also gives you the background in terms of why we're doing this and why father engagement is important to us. And on our home page, we've now highlighted all of the information that goes on in terms of the activity. If you look down in the first um, block of the page, you'll see Dad Take Your Child to School Day 2013 information. That is an ex extract from our 2013 report that was done by um, the Department of Health. And we're most grateful to Lena Green and Camille from the Department of Health for the great work they did with that. The report will be on the website in our resource um, page. So if you go down to the bottom of the website, you'll see there's a connection to resources. And when you click on resources, you have all of the information and all of the tools that you need to prepare yourself for hosting a dad's Take Your Child to School Day web, web um, event. And in, as a host location, everything you need to host an event is on hosting a dad's Take Your Child to School Day. So if you go to that, that page on the website, hosting a dad's Take Your Child to School Day event, it's all in the planning. Everybody's been talking about the activities. You're going to hear examples of what people are doing in terms of dads take your child to school day. But we've provided for you on this page the organizational guide on the bottom. Next to the organizational guide, if you click on that button, you'll see the core team. And most importantly, what I want it to do is to make special mention to the people that did the hard work in the background of creating this website. And that's Coach, um, um, Coach Lynn who was our website manager, um, Devin Rubin, who was the developer. And he's been doing all of the work in the editing and the um, development of the different pages. And then our web designer also, who was also a part of this process in terms of developing the website. So we encourage you, anything that you need in order to prepare yourself for 2014, we have 125 days and counting um, for your dad to take your child to school day. So you can get everything you need here. I'd like to draw your attention to um, the registration page. If you have not done so already, at this time, when I checked this morning, we had about 12 people registered. We designed the web registration page to do several things. One, to make sure we capture all the information on who you are, where you're located throughout the state, and to be able to provide you with help. If you look down towards the bottom of the, of the page, it says, I would like help um, with my event. So if you click that, someone from the, the website core team will be able to contact you and provide you with additional information. or to provide you with a contact locally to help you and prepare for your event. Once you've submitted your registration, if you go down to the bottom of our, our website, you see registered. And if you can click on that registered, it will show you the, pro the programs that I have listed. So your, your program will automatically come up as being registered for the site. And as you can see, we've had some of the sites already registered. And we encourage all of you at this time, if you have not done so, to go ahead and register for this event. Um, 
lastly, what I want to bring your attention to is our themes page. On the themes page, you'll see all the different themes that we use, and we center the day around. And of course, we're not, um, we do not exclude, so you can go beyond this. These are just giving you some ideas, tips, and resources. And I'm going to now turn it over to Ray Pierre Lewis, who's going to talk about how his experience has been with the DAS Take Your Child to School Day event. Good morning. Uh, again, uh, my name is Raymond Pierre-Louis from the Division of Family from the Engagement. Also joined by my colleagues, uh, Lois Highfield and Richard Wentz. I uh, want to first start off by saying how committed the Chancellor is to parent engagement, especially among fathers. Uh, we've been involved with uh, Dad Take Your Child to School Day from the inception. Uh, we're also part of the Fathers Working Group. We work closely with the other divisions within the department to sort of share the message, share information. Uh, we share information from all of our city partners. And in particular, we work closely with our parent coordinators. Uh, our parent coordinators have been key in this initiative in getting our information and just reaching the dads. Uh, in all of our schools, parent coordinators are the first point of contact for parents. So the parent coordinators get to interact with the dads. Uh, in each school, they hold daddy and daughter dances. We hold daddy, daughter pizza. Uh, different sort of initiatives to just piggyback on dad take your child to school. I want to be clear that dad take your child to school day is not one day. Uh, this is ongoing. Uh, and it's definitely something where you can interact with dads and provide them great resources. Uh, also want to share with, with everyone today. I'm that sorry, Ray P. I'm just going to interrupt for a moment. Um, can we advance the slide, please, uh, to get on the uh, slide that Ray's talking about? My apologies. Thank you. Sure. Go right ahead, Ray. Sure. Uh, I'm going toward the end where we participate, our division participates in, in all sorts of uh, any events with dads or just male caregivers. Uh, we participate in many of the public resource fairs, uh, partnered with our city agencies like ACS. We partnered with the Bronx Borough President's Office. We partner, of course, with Coach Lynn with events out in the Bronx, Brooklyn, in, in all our five boroughs. Uh, and we definitely, and I want to keep uh, make this also uh, a point, our parent leadership. In, in Within the, the schools, we have what we have parent associations. Within the districts, we have district presidents councils. And it all comes to form what we have a Chancellor's Parent Advisory Council. So all of this information is also shared with our parent leadership. Uh, and I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ray Pierre and the folks down in New York City. And, and whoever is struggling with the cold down, you have our condolences, and we hope you <laughs> feel better soon. Um, we've got um, an, another presenter next, uh, and that's Frank Williams, actually. And we, we seem to be moving forward with our slides. So if we can go back to Frank, uh, and presuming he's still with us, we'd ask him to talk a bit about what's going on in the Westchester County area, particularly in White Plains, where the Youth Bureau has certainly been a leader in the uh, Dads Take Your Child to School program for several years now. So Frank, if you would. Hi, Greg, can you hear me? Hi, Greg, can you hear me? Sure can, just a little bit louder if you would, Frank. Yeah, hi, Greg. Uh, we are, our dads take your child to school day program. We have about 2,000 fathers who participate annually. And it's an effort in collaboration with the city of White Plains and the mayor's office and the superintendent of schools here in White Plains. And out of that, really Frank, I don't want us to miss this important information. Could you speak just a bit louder? We're, we're a little bit muted here. Yeah, we are. Uh, our our Dads Take Your Child to School Day program is a collaboration between the mayor's office here in White Plains and the city school district. As a result of this effort, uh, more than 2,000 dads are involved in our, our program, and we created several other initiatives. We created a Fatherhood Olympics where fathers from throughout the city get together in June, right before Father's Day, and they participate in sports and recreation and healthy activities such as food and nutrition. In addition to that, we have a dad's cable TV show. So two times a month, we host 
fathers who are involved in family development. These are dads who are participating in creating healthy families. Also, last year we created our first annual fatherhood awards program where we honor fathers who are doing uh, extensive work and uh, contributing to the community. So as a result of our efforts, we created a really a comprehensive fatherhood initiative where dads from all sectors and all backgrounds are participating in creating a healthy community here in the city of White Plains. Frank, thanks so much. That's great work. Um, you were a bit low, so um, in terms of the volume, I don't know if everybody had a chance to hear all the wonderful things that are going on there. But what Frank and his staff have, have done is make this more than a one-day event, um, and it is throughout the city of White Plains. And if I can remember correctly, almost all the schools there are involved. Great support from uh, elected officials and others in the community. Uh, Frank, we really appreciate you being a part of this and the work that you're doing in White Plains. We're now going to turn it all uh, over to um, to a presentation from Newburn, and uh, uh, Michael is a new uh, party to our webinar. So, Michael, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Greg. Um, the the district, uh, Newburn and Large City School District, uh, houses about uh, eleven thousand eight hundred students, and we have uh, twelve schools. And uh, we started in uh, the two thousand and twelve. 13 school year with uh, this initiative um, with a district-wide committee and um, the dads make a difference corner web page we uh, ensured that uh, our web page housed the dads program and from that we uh, proceeded with a uh, daddy daughter dance and this year we had uh, two and a half dads uh, two, two, I'm sorry, two half-day dads' kids' celebrations, um, which involved a catered breakfast and a catered lunch, and uh, we had some classroom and gym activities. Um, also, some speakers that were invited in as well. Um, we had uh, approximately over 380 fathers between those two events uh, that it, that attended, and so. Uh, Moving forward, we're looking uh, for the next steps to be uh, to welcome the uh, new school year uh, with uh, dad kids uh, activities, and then replicate and add activities uh, year round. Uh, you know, as we partner with the boys and girls club, uh, involving health, fitness, involving uh, places of, of uh, entities like barber shops, media. Um, you know, with the fatherhood initiative, and then expanding it a little bit further uh, to allow that communication to happen with uh, stake with other stakeholders as well, and then um, uh, keeping that going by promoting some online presence. And so we are looking uh, forward to an upcoming and uh, great time uh, for the 14-15 school year. I'm going to turn it back over to Greg at this time. Thanks so much, Michael. And again, welcome uh, as one of the presenters. And we look forward to you being in webinars uh, with us in the future. And again, Newberg very actively engaged in this work with us for many years now. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the efforts in Niagara Falls as we move to the next slide. And, and uh, Judy was unfortunately able to be with us this morning, but that's the nature of the business. Sometimes you get called away kind of um, at the last minute. But there are some other folks who are registered from that part of the state, um, as well as um, from throughout the state. Um, and so we're glad that you're on board with us. We have some faith-based organizations who are with us today, too. So thanks so much for that. Um, Judy picked this up uh, several years ago, probably three or four years ago now, and became a huge advocate for us in the Niagara Falls School District. Um, and so as you can see from her stats, there's 7,000 students uh, who are two-thirds below the poverty rate. and and Last year, um, they had this, this, this wonderful turnaround, but limited effective partnerships. And this year, they're looking to do something to impact on that and get some more capacity and some, more, and some better outcomes. So she's talking about the advanced planning that they're doing to expand their partnerships, um, signage throughout the city, flyers everywhere, and, and bumper stickers. And I know Judy talked about the bumper stickers last year, which was a great hit. And even door prizes to encourage um, the schools and the fathers and the father figures to participate. Of course, our presence on web pages throughout the uh, city 
is real, real important. So if we can link with partners and have our information up on their websites, that's always a critical way of getting information out. Nothing replaces word of mouth. Um, that will be the ancient and most <laughs> tried and tested uh, way of getting uh, information out to our communities. And then, of course, community partnerships are always key. Relationship building is always key. And the goal, of course, to sustain the involvement throughout the year, we want to just keep making that point because we're finding that um, people are looking at this as an event as, a, as opposed to an ongoing initiative, and we certainly want this to be a part of the culture, the climate, and the culture within our educational conversation and our conversation about better outcomes for students. So we miss Judy. We thank her for sending in her information. Look forward to having her on future webinars. I'm going to turn this over to Melvin Alston, who is with the New York City Administration for Children's Services, to talk about what ACS is doing in their involvement in the work of the Advanced Teacher Child to School program. Melvin? I'm a little bit nervous, but let me proceed. Um, I guess back, back in August of uh, 2012, ACS, I guess, ACS found a way to become more involved in the fatherhood work, primarily because we found that ACS receives a large number of cases called in uh, from schools. And it became apparent that we could gain a lot by getting more involved in this endeavor. Uh, in 2013, in 2013, we set about having, I guess, a video conference in our office to that was video conference to all our all our um, all our stakeholders and throughout the city of New York to all our offices, coming up with some kind of strategy that we could utilize. Uh, the strategic position of ACS in the city of New York. When I say strategic place, we have offices throughout the city of New York in each borough. And we tried to I, we use this um this conference as a strategy to garner information on how we could proceed. Um, in, in May of two thousand in 13, we organized a conference again. We organized a conference again to in 2013. We organized again um, with our partners. We organized again with our partners throughout. The end result was the creation of the Responsible Fatherhood, the Responsible Fatherhood Coalition, which is a citywide coalition of multi-agencies, community-based, and the community-based collaboration. Community-based collaboration with a, a lot of our partners. The collaboration helps bring various service providers and community stakeholders together in order to share information and resources with fathers, father figures, or to take your dad to school day. And beyond. We use the word beyond to, to, to basically to know that we want to go beyond this one day event and make it something of an everyday event where fathers can receive information at the schools not only when they bring their child to school on Calvary school day, but on other days that the school do allow the fathers to come and, 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 sh and share and gain information. By doing this, the dads, the schools, and the community partners get a chance to have a relationship. If the dads see a point where they are more involved when they bring their child to school, they're interested in their children, education, when they come to school, they can receive vital information on how they can better take care of their families and community. When we talk about information, they can come to the schools and gain information on relationships, child support, domestic violence, education, and a variety of other areas. 
ACS can help provide the technical support to make sure when dads come to school that they can gain this information. Dads can have forums. Dads can have, I guess, with the school's cooperation, there could be uh, children bring your dads to school to have certain play dates with their dad at the school, utilizing the school as a safe haven where they can come together. What we're talking about is a relationship between dads, schools, and the CEOs, which is a little bit different than what we've been doing before. With the school serving as, like I said, a safe haven, we can make this happen on a, on a regular basis, not just only on that one day. The child, dad bring your child to school now at ACS. We're really going out and trying to make this happen now with relationships with the schools to bring them on board for this venture that will be put well, in the end, help, <clears throat> help ACS, because like I said before, we receive a large number of our cases or our callings from the schools, so that hopefully by using this, uh, uh, I guess, formula, dads are better able to take care of their families, their, I guess, community and their neighborhoods and become uh, and gain information, information that they wouldn't readily they go someplace else to get. They're getting this information at the schools, utilizing the schools that we believe somewhat are going to utilize and can be utilized a little bit better for them and their children. Back to you, Greg. Yeah, Melvin. Thank you so much. We appreciate that presentation. There's a lot going on from ACS. What I wanted to do now, um, before we go into the into the next slide, is ask Alan Farrell, um, who who is a key partner from the New York City Mayor's Office and has been involved in this effort um, since the beginning, to just talk a bit about the work that that he sees coming from the work that he's doing from the New York City Mayor's Office, and then uh, we'll move forward with our with our presentation. So, Alan, if you would. Uh, thank you, Greg. Um, so. Before I go into the theme, just a little bit about um, NYC Dads, the Mayor's Fatherhood Initiative. Um, back in 2010, the mayor announced the launch of the Young Men's Initiative, and one of the first things he do is launch a fatherhood initiative in the city. And what that looks like is about 10 or 11 city agencies, um, some of which, a few of which are around the table, uh, Department of Health and Mental Health, uh, Nurse Family Partnership, Department of Education, uh, Division of Family and Community Engagement. Um, you just heard from ACS um, and, and others, uh, Department of Youth Community Development, NYCHA, Parks, etc. The whole idea is that some of these uh, agencies were previously serving fathers uh, specifically through programs, focused policy efforts, um, uh, really seeking ways to better engage and serve fathers. But we also realized that we were probably missing opportunities to do that. So now um, you have this multi-agency, cross-agency effort called the Fatherhood Working Group, NYC Dad, from the Men's Fatherhood Initiative. And so uh, continue to be very excited about um, this opportunity to, to leverage those relationships. So now on to themes. Um, so you can see the themes there. Uh, really, uh, we see dads take their child to school day is just one strategy, just one way of engaging uh, fathers and strengthening families uh, throughout our, our city and throughout our state. And uh, so these themes that we're going to talk about for a few minutes um, are just uh, some examples. They're not an exhaustive list, but they are some examples of uh, ways that you can organize your efforts to uh, take advantage of the unique opportunity to engage uh, fathers and male role models. Um, you should really think about just what is what does winning look like in your school community? What does winning look like um, in your community as you think about the organizing team? Let's look at financial literacy and asset building. So um, I think you know some of us can probably remember in our, our school experience actually maybe even being taught how to start a bank account or being taught how to write a check or how to balance a checkbook. Others of us probably could say in our school experience we never had that and maybe not even in our family. Uh, and so we know that when um, children, uh, youth, and, and families can begin uh, to think about what uh, good money management skills look like, um, that can um, really bode well uh, for, in terms of asset uh, building uh, for their families and ultimately their community. 
um, on the job development and educational advancement. And I should say, you know, even before we move on, just you note that there are uh, at the bottom of each of these sections, um, you have a make connections uh, section. So I didn't note it in the previous uh, piece, but there are uh, various websites and places you can go to get information um, to promote these particular themes. So under job development, we also, all the research tells us that when dads are working and able to take care of themselves um, uh, and their families, that they're more likely to be involved in the lives of their children. And so um, schools are a great place to bring, uh, as Melvin alluded earlier, bring those resources to the schools um, where you have uh, a unique opportunity to engage dads uh, around um, not only promoting their children's education, but their own education as well as uh, employment. Uh, on to improving literacy and homework health. I think uh, there's research out there now that says that um, many children in low-income communities, uh, by the time they reach uh, kindergarten, are thousands of words uh, behind um, in, in terms of, uh, as, as opposed to their, their counterparts um, in other uh, more affluent uh, communities. And so we know that when dads and, and, and male role models are empowered um, in terms of how to read to their children, how to engage their children around literacy, you're going to see better outcomes for kids uh, by the third grade. Um, and we know that when kids are reading um, and, uh, uh, and doing well there in terms of literacy and numeracy by the third grade, you're going to see better outcomes in terms of high school graduations, et cetera. Um, and so we want to promote that. And again, there are resources there to help you uh, do that. On the health and wellness for men and families, um, uh, nearly one in three children of American, in America are overweight or, or obese, uh, particularly uh, African American and Latino uh, communities. Um, we want to do something to get in front of that. Um, again, all things tell us that when fathers are taking care of themselves, clearly they're going to be around long enough, longer to be with their children and families and communities. But also, it's just a great example to their own children. Um, we've got the Let's Move campaign um, by our, our First Lady, but there are also other campaigns to promote health and wellness uh, for men and their children. And so we, you know, that could be a great uh, organizing team. Uh, on to school safety and volunteer opportunities. Um, there have been studies that show that just when men are present, physically present in community, you see um, less crime, uh, you see uh, in schools, in hallways, just less bullying. Um, and, and so you want to look for opportunities to engage men um, to uh, assist you in uh, you know, maybe walk, watch, walk, walking kids to the, to the, to the uh, bus stop or um, waiting with them as the bus pulls up in front of the schools. A great resource is Watchdog, Dads of Great Students. Um, they've got a great model for that. Um, and their uh, website is there under the Make Connections section. And finally, a uh, new theme for us, supporting immigrant families. Um, we, excuse me. Well, right. We got supporting new Americans. Uh, pardon me. And so we know that uh, new American families may not be uh, as involved in their uh, child's academic life due to barriers such as language, uh, work schedule, just overall comfort with the, with the school system. Um, oftentimes what we find is that, uh, generally speaking, uh, new American families uh, might, uh, dads might believe that education is the domain of mom. And so we want to remove uh, any barriers um, and demystify the school system any way, uh, in any way that we can. And so again, uh, there are a number of resources um, here in the city, uh, throughout the state to help do that. Uh, we know that in New York City, the Department of Education has a translation and interpretation unit. And so schools in advance um, can uh, contact uh, those folks to assist with that as well as believe the uh, English, Office of English Language Learners to assist in uh, engaging um, new American uh, families. So again, these themes are not exhausted. It's not an exhaustive list. 
Um, but we do believe that these are a great starting point uh, for you to uh, organize your engagement of fathers and male women. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alan. Uh, appreciate it. <clears throat> Um, we, we want to encourage uh, our faith-based organizations to participate in this. And if you if you take a look at what's going on around the country, there's a real presence of faith organizations on the desk of your child to school day, and then around issues of of, of, of um, engagement with community, um, engagement with families, and making the connection between families and schools more available to people. So we want to encourage fraternities and sororities also to adopt schools. That's always a great way to um, get work done throughout the year. And certainly fraternities and sororities have a great history of including um, this as part of their agenda and including it in, their, uh, in the work that they do locally. Um, we have folks on the phone who are from as far away as Cuyahoga County, uh, certainly Niagara Falls, uh, Long Island's on the phone. So we want to hear from you in a few moments with some questions um, that we might be able to address before we close out today. Um, before we do that, though, we're going to turn it over to Ed Moss and talk a bit about what might happen, what you might consider beyond September the 16th. So, Ed, if you would take us through that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, Craig, and thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, today. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us at Fathers Incorporated, and um, as we contracted with the government to operate the National Responsible Father Clearinghouse, to share a little bit about what we see from a 30,000 foot level. Uh, so we're excited to hear as, as this webinar and as this work in New York State has developed to understand that people are now getting the message clearly that this is beyond just one day. Uh, beyond September 16th, we're looking to see and do a lot more as far as engaging fathers and their families to uh, increase the educational outcomes for children. So uh, I wanted to just highlight a couple of things that I think uh, my colleagues already discussed, um, and particularly um, Alan just shared about the various themes. Um, in order to keep fathers coming back and to keep them consistently involved, there needs to be a level of transparency that um, the school district provides, and they need to be consistent in their efforts to reach out to dads. Oftentimes, we find in the work with men uh, and fathers that there's a uh, sort of lukewarm uh, invitation and then there's not the intentional nature of really looking at what dads need um, to really be engaged and be involved ongoing. And so I'm really excited to hear some of the themes that were laid out to you. And I understand that Alan mentioned that it, it wasn't going to be solely prescriptive, but he wanted to give you some ideas about some, some things that you could do with your dads in your community. And I think it's looking at your community seeing what the dads need, having communications and conversations with them, getting feedback from them about what they need. Because dads and moms do not uh, engage services the same way. Dads are looking for real answers right away so that they can go out and act on it. And they're more, less apt to sit down and, and major conversations and have dialogue. So whenever we can engage dads in a way that they feel safe and comfortable, it's a great thing. And I'm going to share a little bit about what I mean by that when I talk about uh, the Fatherhood Buzz Barbershop initiative in a few moments. The second thing I think is important is systemic buy-in from your school districts. I think if teachers, administrators, and central administration alike do, are not on the same page, it's, it's a real challenge to really get some sort of real intentional fatherhood initiative going in your various schools or school districts. Um, I, I know for a fact, and research bears this out, um, a lot of the research from Dr. Karen Mapp out of Harvard suggests that any school improvement, um, any real significant school improvement, has to have a family and community engagement model that is significantly wo woven into the fabric of whatever kind of curriculum and instruction that's going to be developed or submitted to the schools. So we, we have to have uh, a real intentional family and engagement model that looks to engage fathers in particular and families in general and communities in general in the educational process of the uh, children. Uh, it does take a village to raise a child. And in order to really raise that child, we need to have family and community engaged. So there needs to be a systemic buy-in buy throughout the entire district and, in fact, the community, I would add. Uh, and finally, I think the follow-through is important. Um, it's one thing to have an event. Um, it's one thing to get some information. 
but it's another thing to follow through with that information. What we find across the country is the successful programs are ready and ready, ready and able to answer dad's questions when they call. Um, the worst thing that can happen is when a dad calls or is looking for some information, he is told, I don't have that call back tomorrow or come see us next week. And so it's really critical that when we establish our programs that we look to speak to how we can speak to the men's issues, the father's issues, in a real-time manner. Um, we should plan our events with the end in mind. Our objective is to make sure that we have dads engaged in the lives, educational lives of their children. And so in order to do that, we need to know what, make, what makes dads comfortable, how, they, how we can best communicate to them. And that's why I'll transition to our Fatherhood Buzz campaign. Um, Nas the National Responsible Fatherhood Clearinghouse has, over the last several years, promoted a barbershop initiative called Fatherhood Buzz, where we enter into barbershops and share responsible fatherhood information across the country so in a place where dads feel safe and that they trust. And so it's a really great way to speak to dads, to have them hear the information that, that you're trying to disseminate, and also to have them activate on it because they're in a, a place where they feel safe, in a place where they usually have these conversations organically, but oftentimes don't get the information that they really need to, to make informed decisions. So we're excited about um, our upcoming Fatherhood Buzz effort on June 14th, and we're looking to partner with as many folks on the line as are interested. I would add this as well. We are going to be, um, this year, having a coloring book for preschool age kids that will have a celebrating Fatherhood and Fatherhood Buzz theme that we're going to be disseminating to barbershops. So we encourage you all, to, as you are planning your father, I'm sorry, your um, dad take your child to school events, that you would consider um, inviting kids um, of preschool age and dads with preschool age children to the barbershop on June 14th that might be able to participate in the um, coloring book uh, program that we have going. Um, as Alan mentioned, also on my slides you'll see there are several other organizations that um, would provide some resources and strategies to uh, engage in effective dads take your school programs, as well as information to go beyond the Dads Take Your School Day event and look at other programming that might be um, effective in and around your schools. So with that, I will turn it back over to Greg. Thanks so much, Ed. Um, I want to turn it over to Lena um, for just a moment to talk about the 2013 report. Before I do that, uh, uh, Ed has up on his slide that you can see. Uh, there are other partners who are out there working with us who are developing a great relationship with the New York State PTA. I look forward to being a part of some of their events also. All Pro Dads has been a wonderful new partner for us. And Watch Dogs um, certainly has been a part of this for several years. Now we want to lift them up and encourage you to make your own local partnership um, um, collaborations as you move forward. So Lena, would you talk about the 2013 report and then we'll begin to close out and ask for some quick uh, questions from the uh, audience. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to lift a couple of important points from the 2013 report. Um, so Alan spoke a little bit, a little bit about the themes um, earlier today, but we wanted to just give you a little bit more information about some of the themes that were chosen and what schools and organizations decided to focus on. Um, so 4.69 focused on financial literacy. 7.5% focused on job development and educational advancement. 23.9% focused on improving literacy and homework health. 12.68% focused on health and wellness for, for men and families. 20.19%, excuse me, uh, focused on school safety and volunteer opportunities. And 0.47% uh, focused on supporting uh, new American families. Uh, and so the largest number, 30.5% focused on other. And so what that means is that people really felt comfortable focusing on other things outside of what was specifically given with regard to themes. And some of those themes included uh, PTA is not just for moms, quality time for kids, the importance of a positive male role model in children's lives, father's impact on child success, becoming a better dad, Developing Boys to Men, Dad's Role in Education, 
and supporting father involvement. So there really is a lot of flexibility in working with dads to take your child to school. And you really can focus on working with uh, the school and the community partners and dads and fathers if they feel passionate about something in particular to really move in any direction that they feel most comfortable. So with the type of organizations that participated last year, we had 44.4% were Head Start Daycare, 30.56% Elementary School, 7.4% Middle School, 0.93% High School, Community Partner came in at 3.7%, Houses of Worship came in at 0.46%, and Other came in at 12.5%. Um, so just to, to give um, another example, we had 478 schools and organizations registered in total. Um, so we are very excited about that, and we look forward to helping you all um, help us spread the word about increasing our numbers for Dad's Take Your Child to School Day for 2014. So outside of New York City, we had a total of 71, um, including several schools that registered for uh, uh, Dad's Take Your Child to School that were not in New York State. In Brooklyn, we had 133 schools registered, Queens, 94, Manhattan, 70, the Bronx, 84, Staten Island, 18, and Long Island, 3. Um, so to end on this note, um, based on the results of the survey, um, we want to drive three points home for you all. So the first is that planning early for your event is key. Two, schools engaging community partners um, to help plan and execute the event is incredibly important. And three, to utilize the resources available on the website. Um, and please also know that we have the flyers, letters to parents, and certificates available in both English and Spanish. So Greg, I'll kick it back over to you. Thanks so much, Lynn. Really important information. Um, I want to ask Coach Lynn if he would take just a moment to talk about the future of the website. Um, please get your questions ready so we can respond to a few of them, and then we'll talk about uh, a poll that we'd like you to take a, a look at doing for us so we can improve our webinars and our efforts with you in the future. Thank you, Greg. Um, congratulations to all that are here today and to the team for getting ready for the 2014 Dad's Take Your Child to School Day. I'll be brief. We've been doing this for quite some time, and what we found is, is that while many of the schools want to participate and join us, they don't have the personnel, experience, or know-how to not only have a successful Dad's Take Your Child to School Day, but go beyond. Many of the schools at this point are still heavy laden with females. Of course, we all know that. Many of the teachers that are there, parent coordinators, they're not fathers. They're not dealing with fathers, and they've never dealt with fathers. So we've come up with a program that we're going to be putting together, a DVD, if you will, that's going to be a how-to, so that those schools who want to participate on this day but don't really have the personnel to have an event We'll be able to support them. We'll be able to give them the information they need regarding local fatherhood initiatives, issues that are pertaining to fathers that we've, we've known for years. We'll be able to give them the resources they need and support them. As well as throughout the year, we're hoping to work with the Department of Education on, on having fatherhood programs in all of the schools. We're looking to do it statewide, one team, one voice, where on a certain day, We'll have a fatherhood meeting in the schools, probably and hopefully coinciding with the PTA meetings, where we'll be able to have the fathers there and give them the information and the support and the discipline that they need. Lastly, I just want to say for all those who are looking for fatherhood initiatives, we're encouraging you, if you don't mind, to support fatherhood through deeds, not words. We've seen that a lot of the fatherhood programs are heavy on conversation, we're not big on making the fathers do some things. You got to do some laundry. You got to do some dishes. You got to wash some clothes. All that want to talk about it all day, that's great. But what are you doing to really make it happen? So that's what we're pushing for this year. And we look forward to working with all of you on making this happen. It's going to happen. You already know that. And congratulations to the team, the core team, on helping putting this uh, website together. You guys did a fantastic job. And I, I just want to do a plug on this because Coach and Devin were not in the room when I spoke about the website earlier. 
um, Coach Lynn and Devin Rubin were most instrumental in us getting this website together. So we encourage you to tell all your friends, go to the website, utilize the website. There are so many different avenues to contact us if you have questions or if you're experiencing any problems, and there's a lot of information. Take your time and peruse the PSAs, the quotes, and support, and all the other media information that's out there to help you with the website, with um, your 2014 Dash Take Your Child to School Day event. Back to you, Greg. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Judy. We appreciate that. And Coach Lynn, thank you. Um, I felt like I was back on the field for a moment there, so thank you so much for being with you, Coach. <laughs> so we, we have a lot of ideas that we hope that you will take advantage of. Certainly want to thank the folks who I've worked with over the last several years here in the Capital District. Um, and the Troy area CEO uh, is on board with us. And um, um, my colleagues here at OCFS who have been very helpful. Here's some of the partners and sponsors we've had. Uh, both currently and over the course of time. Um, you can certainly have your own sponsors locally. If you have any burning questions, um, we'd ask you to submit those uh, right now because we're about to close out the, the webinar. I think we're done at about 11 o'clock today, and we're right at 11. Um, so if we've got just a couple of seconds, maybe we can take a, a burning question. If not, we are all available um, to answer questions um, down the road. We will probably be having another webinar um, in the future, so please stay tuned for that. And we're going to try and get some polling questions out to you so that you can help us make this a better experience. Let us know what you really need us to focus on in addition to what we've done today uh, and how we can better meet your needs. So if you have any questions, you can send those um, in to us now. Hi, Greg. This is Jackie. There are a couple questions here that I want to ask, Great. and then whoever can answer them. The first one says, when will the online templates for such items as the certificates, et cetera, be updated for 2014 so that, so that they can be downloaded for use before and in September? We will have those, um, those certificates available for everybody on the website by June. But right now on the website there are um, documents on there that you can utilize, download, and modify accordingly. And if, the, and if you go to the resource page on the website, you'll see those documents on there. Okay, great. Thank you. And there is one more question. It's from someone at Monroe Community College. And her question is, has any of these great activities been done at the college level? How can we do a Dad's Take Your Child to School Day? Any ideas? Uh, good morning. So uh, this is Alan. I'm aware of anything being done at the college level. Uh, yeah, this is okay, Alan. Alan. Hi, this is Alan Farrell. Um, I can speak to one of our Young Men's Initiative programs, the CUNY Fatherhood Academy. The CUNY Fatherhood Academy engages young dads, uh, 16 to 24, uh, on a college campus, campus of LaGuardia Community College. And um, you, we, we uh, consistently encourage those dads um, to continue to be involved in the lives of their children in any way that they can, uh, and that includes their children's education. And so where local community colleges or, uh, or, or colleges, for that matter, are uh, willing to serve parents, in this case fathers, and willing to work with their offices of adult uh, continuing education, or if they have a community uh, a community outreach arm or other or nonprofit arm um, are willing to engage uh, schools in that way. Um, I think that that's something that could absolutely happen. We we haven't had a, a formal uh, CUNY uh, City University of New York uh, college do that here in New York City, but uh, it could happen if, if schools were willing to engage uh, parents and fathers uh, on their campus. Hope that's helpful. Okay. I think that was Alan. That was a great question, and so we look forward, Monroe County, to talking some more about that with you, actually. Okay, and then someone else asked, "Can we get a list of the schools that have registered in the Bronx?" If you go on the website, on the registered page of the website, on the bottom, the bottom of the the website page, which is registered, 
it will show you who has registered thus far. So the design of the website right now is set up so that there won't be duplications as we've had previously. So once the telephone number is placed in there, if that number is already in there, it will tell you that the school or that location has already registered. And one way for you to make sure that your school is registered is by going to the registered page first to see if your school is there. If your school is not there, then go ahead and go to the registration page and sign up your school. And just to note, uh, Judy's so okay. point. Very helpful. One, one last thing, though, just to note on Judy's point, in the case where a school could be co-located, um, and I don't know if they, schools may share an office, perhaps sharing a phone number. Um, to Judy's point, just the way that this uh, template is designed, you're probably going to want to enter a different phone number, even if that's someone's cell phone or another contact, a parent coordinator or some other uh, person's contact, so that the, the school um, can be individually uh, recognized. Okay, someone just typed in that Kingsborough Community College apparently is involved. So for those of you who are interested. And there looks like there is one final question. Should community programs who are not doing an event but want to work with a school, should they register? Absolutely. We encourage everybody who is, who is interested. If you're a community-based organization and you're interested, you still register for the event. And then what we would recommend that you do is you ask for help with that. We will connect you with the school if necessary, and it will allow us the opportunity to provide schools with the support that they need in their various areas. Can I, can I add to that, please? Uh, the coalition is comprised of, the coalition of New York City is comprised of a lot of community organizations. What I would recommend is that they join the coalition in a particular borough, and in this way, when the coalition goes into the schools, they're part of the coalition, which is arbitrary and school. Thanks so much for that. Good recommendations. I think we're pretty much out of time. Is that true? Okay. Yeah, great. But there's just one more question that came through, so I think it's an easy one to answer. No rush. The question is, no rush at we all. have one, okay, good. We have one centralized phone number, but have 20 sites. We are not comfortable giving private cell numbers. Can we register all sites? What we would, we'll, what we would suggest is that one person register the site, the original site, and then they um, contact us, um, send us an email, and then we'll figure out how to circumvent that to register all the additional sites. The important thing for this is to make sure that the sites that we list are actually hosting events. And this is very important, and we want to make sure that our information or our data in our reports are accurate whereby anyone, and we're trying to encourage people to connect to the media so that you can get more feed at, um, within the community and awareness about father engagement. And so in order to do that, we need to make sure that if you register that you're actually hosting an event. So if you have more than one site, contact us and we'll work out the logistics to make sure that that information is updated on the website. Okay, that's good because the person just responded that all 20 sites do host events. That's perfect. And Greg, there's one more question that um, came in. Somebody in Clinton and Franklin County was asking, is it possible to reproduce a short video clip for the schools to show off the take, dads take your child to school day? We would like to share it with the schools in our district. In fact, that was one of the things that um, um, Coach Lynn and I are working on right now. We're doing several videos that we're putting together. We're doing a how-to video on how to host a Dad's Take Your Child to School Day event, and we definitely can put together something so that you can provide to your school. Absolutely. Great. And if you go to the website, um, there's a media uh, page there, uh, and you can probably take some, some ideas from that. We also have copies of our Creating Father-Friendly Schools DVD, which was a webinar we presented a couple of years ago. So certainly feel free to reach out to us and certainly to me here at OCFS um, uh, for, for more information. Okay? 
do we have any more questions or are we are we pretty much at an end here? And those those videos no, will be, great. the videos will be ready on June fifteenth. Thanks. We have another question? No, Greg, this is Jackie. It looks like those are all our questions. All right. Certainly, once again, want to thank everyone for participating in this, certainly the presenters, those of you who helped to join us to talk about your program efforts, and all of you who have um, dialed in uh, for this uh, webinar today. I'm just going to leave you with a quick visual. Last year, there was a father who was taking his child to school by riding on a bicycle with him to get there in the rain. So the, the myth that fathers don't want to be engaged in school is just that, a myth. We have to find a way to encourage and involve them, and that's what work that we're engaged in. So we look forward to the next time we get a chance to spend time with you talking about this, the family engagement work that we're doing to enhance better outcomes for children, youth, and families. Um, look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.